Domine participate e get spiritus sancti. Amen. So we have today another um, octave day of Christmas. The Mass is once again the, the third Mass of Christmas Day itself. Uh, we have just a couple of um, kind of lesser known saints for today. today. Uh, but first, for the 30th of December, we have Saint Egwin of Worcester. English saint, obviously, uh, born in the 7th century, and he ended up becoming bishop of that city, uh, Bishop of Worcester, and his diocese was in great need of reform, and which he did, but he went too far in the other direction. So he was a little bit harsh on priests and so on, uh, to the extent where um, the, some, the people complained, and most notably some, um, some of the noblemen, right, the, the, the nobility complained. Uh, such that it was decided he should leave the diocese for a while. So uh, he very well may have been too harsh, or at least he felt he was, uh, because as a sign of penance uh, to kind of like reconcile some parties, he went on a pilgrimage to Rome barefoot in shackles. He actually uh, uh, um, locked himself into shackles and threw the key into uh, the river. And then he uh, went all the way to Rome. He had a few companions with him and then um, shackled the whole time. And then he arrived at Rome, he was praying at the Tomb of the Apostles, and then one of his companions uh, went to the marketplace and bought some food, um, got some fish, and cut open the fish and found the key to the shackles. So then he brought it to the bishop, he unlocked himself, and that was, that was kind of a sign, he, he kind of realized at that point that um, uh, it vindicated him a little bit. Like he hadn't actually been as harsh as people were, were uh, saying. Uh, so after this miracle, right, um, <laughs> which was re really was, um, he went back to, to England, um, uh, resumed as bishop, and, uh, but he also built a Benedictine monastery. Uh, in fact, it, it seems that he retired there uh, as he, as in his later life. He uh, eventually died there uh, on this day, December 30th, in the year 717. So St. Egwin of Worcester. Uh, another interesting story, uh, St. Anicia of Thessalonica. Uh, she was... Uh, uh, wealthy, uh, pious Christian family, uh, dedicated herself as a young girl to uh, vows of chastity and poverty. She was very prayerful, she loved the poor, and she was very feisty, as we will see. Um, so it's the year 304, she was, uh, this is during the Diocletian persecution, and she's on her way to Mass, and she's apprehended by a Roman soldier. And there's, I don't know, I mean, what, what the, the um, incident was, but during the exchange, he discovers that she is a Catholic, a Christian, right? He discovers her faith. And so he um, begins to beat her and is going to drag her to a Roman uh, temple and force her to sacrifice to the gods. And um, so she's resisting. And at one point, he, he rips off her veil, which is a sign of her chastity and her purity. Um, and she spit in his face. Uh, that's where the feistiness comes out. Well, that apparently was the last straw for the soldier, so he draws his sword and he martyrs her uh, right there. So, I don't know, perhaps he was um, removing more than her veil, um, so she was, she was defending her, her uh, chastity, her, um, her vows. Uh, but that just kind of shows, I think, that um, I would say the saints aren't perfect, right? It wasn't like she dropped her knees in prayer and she just gave her life willingly. She was, you know, probably spitting and, you know, fighting and so on. So um, it's not the perfect example, but it does show that uh, desire and that love of God and love of holy purity. So uh, St. Anicia of Thessalonica, uh, martyr, uh, gives hope to all of you feisty women out there. You, you can be a saint too. Pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.